North Korea voted to elect 700 members to the national legislature. But what does voting mean in a totalitarian state like North Korea? Many Westerners find themselves relatively unfamiliar with the vast continent of Asia, often unaware of the unique realities that exist within its diverse countries. One particularly interesting nation on this continent is the Democratic Republic of Korea. Situated in East Asia, this hermit kingdom, marked by a history of isolation dating back to the Korean War's armistic, remains veiled in mystery to the Western world. Join us as we delve into the intriguing and at times bewildering realm of North Korean governance. Here are 20 of the craziest laws that uniquely define life within its boundaries. Number 20. The Generational Punishment Act of North Korea in North Korea, a draconian approach to law enforcement exists, known as the Generational Punishment Act, where the consequences of committing a crime extend far beyond the accused individual. This unique policy, deeply ingrained in the country's history, is rooted in the principle that if one breaks the law, their entire family spanning generations may also face severe penalties. This distinctive legal practice, which operates outside the formal legal system, is a testament to the oppressive nature of the North Korean regime. Under the Generational Punishment Act, the accused individual's parents, grandparents, and children can be subjected to punishment alongside the offender. Even in cases where the perpetrator cannot be located, their family members are held responsible in their stead, regardless of their involvement in the alleged crime. Countless testimonies from defectors who have escaped North Korea have corroborated the existence of this practice. In accordance with this rule, up to three generations of a political offender's family can be summarily imprisoned or, in some instances, executed. Astonishingly, the relatives of the accused are often left in the dark about the reasons for their suspicion, exacerbating the sense of injustice. The punitive measures extend to the very children born within the confines of these harsh prison camps, further perpetuating the cycle of suffering. Introduced with the founding of the North Korean state in 1948, this association system traces its roots back to the historical Joseon Kingdom. In an effort to deter any form of dissent, the prison camps in North Korea are deliberately designed to be inhumane. They serve as a grim reminder to the populace, effectively instilling fear to the point where even the thought of wrongdoing becomes inconceivable. Individuals suspected of political crimes often find themselves in the most brutal of lab R camps, commonly referred to as Kwan Li. Reports from these facilities depict conditions that are not only harsh, but also beyond human endurance. Inmates routinely endure starvation, torture, and physical assaults. Number 19. North Korea's Stranglehold on Appearance, Haircuts, and Fashion According to the North Korean government, one of the most effective methods of maintaining control over its citizens is by putting them in uniform. The rationale behind this notion is that when everyone looks the same, rebellion becomes significantly more challenging. In North Korea, every aspect of an individual's appearance, from clothing and hairstyles to hygiene, is tightly regulated by the state, eroding the avenues for self-expression. In this highly controlled environment, even seemingly trivial matters like clothing choices carry significant political weight. Women, in particular, are subject to stringent guidelines on how they should dress. Their clothing must be loose-fitting and modest, with a strict prohibition on embracing foreign fashion trends. The state seeks to align women's appearances with the ideals of socialist living, suppressing any expressions of individuality through attire. Those who dare to deviate from these standards are publicly shamed, reinforcing the regime's control over personal expression. Reports have circulated indicating that North Koreans may have a limited selection of approved haircuts. While the accuracy of these reports remains unconfirmed, a government-published women's magazine has explicitly stated that women are not allowed to grow their hair long. This strict control over personal appearance is in stark contrast to the global trend of personal freedom in dressing as one desires. Interestingly, despite the oppressive regime, a form of rebellion has emerged within North Korea. Recent reports, including one from the New York Times, suggest that women in Pyongyang, the capital city, are defying the state's dress code. They can be seen wearing stiletto heels, skirts above the knee, 
and colorful clothing. This defiance has given rise to a thriving black market for clothing and makeup smuggled in from South Korea. To combat these displays of individuality, North Korea has established a unique institution known as the Fashion Police. Comprised of members from a women's union, these enforcers wield whistles and are tasked with rigorously upholding the state's appearance regulations, particularly for women. This peculiar form of policing serves as a constant reminder of the regime's determination to maintain strict control over its citizens' appearances and suppress any form of expression that deviates from the established norms. Number 18. North Korea's Isolationist Approach. International calls are a crime. North Korea's unique international relations, led by Kim Jong-un, draw global attention for human rights violations and the stark contrast in access to essential services, notably communication, which most countries take for granted. The North Korean government tightly controls all forms of communication, strictly monitoring it and deeming international phone calls illegal. This control serves their strategy of isolating citizens from the world, strictly forbidding any interaction with perceived enemies. Amnesty. International has documented this, noting a popular mobile service used by over 3 million people but prohibiting international calls. Only a select few, usually high-ranking officials and foreigners, can access the Internet. Ordinary citizens can't use mobile phones to contact defected family members. Violating this law leads to detention camps or political prison, instilling fear among the population. This restriction leaves loved ones in distress, uncertain about each other's well-being. North Koreans have turned to smuggled phones and SIM cards from China to connect with the outside world, showcasing the enduring human spirit seeking connection and information, even under oppressive regimes aiming to isolate them. Number 17. North Korea's Unique Basketball Laws In North Korea's secretive realm, Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un, known for his passion for basketball and admiration of players like Michael Jordan and Dennis Rodman, has cultivated an unusual version of the sport. In 2013, he even arranged a basketball match with Rodman in Pyongyang, showcasing his fascination with the game. This distinct form of basketball traces its origins to Kim Jong-un's father, Kim Jong-il. After taking over leadership in 2011, Kim Jong-un introduced some changes, crafting a unique North Korean style of the game. Internationally, North Korean basketball teams adhere to standard rules. However, for local tournaments, exclusive rules apply. Here, slam dunks fetch an impressive three points, while a three-pointer gains four. The last three seconds of the game bring heightened drama, with baskets scored at this time earning an astonishing eight points. Missing a free throw doesn't merely cost a point, it deducts one. These unconventional rules can completely alter a team's strategy based on the score gap, offering a fascinating glimpse into North Korea's distinctive sports culture, molded by its basketball-loving leader Kim Jong-un. Number 16. Mourning Traditions in Monarchies and Dictatorships In countries with enduring monarchies and autocratic governments, there are often peculiar traditions and rituals that uphold existing power structures. For instance, the UK has maintained numerous royal customs and ceremonies. Similarly, nations with dictatorial regimes like North Korea have their own unique mourning practices. An example is the commemoration of Kim Jong-il's death anniversary, father of the current leader Kim Jong-un. In 2021, the mourning period for Kim Jong-il's anniversary lasted 11 days, accompanied by specific restrictions. Citizens refrained from leisure activities, alcohol, and even laughter on the anniversary day. Grocery shopping and birthday celebrations were banned, and if someone passed away during this period, their remains remained untouched until the national mourning ended. Disobeying these rules reportedly led to arrests. These customs provide insight into North Korea's distinct cultural and political landscape, where tradition and state authority blend in ways that may seem perplexing to outsiders. Number 15. Unique Birthing Laws and Rights North Korea, known for its distinct and often enigmatic policies, maintains a set of birthing laws and rights that set it apart from the rest of the world. Under local law, unmarried mothers face a particularly challenging situation, as they are forbidden from registering the birth of their child. Consequently, 
these children are denied the legal protections afforded to others in this isolated nation. The stark implications of this policy came to light in 2020 when mothers in South Pyongyang province sought to have their infants vaccinated at local hospitals. Shockingly, the children born out of wedlock were turned away, depriving them of essential necessities, including food and health care. Adding to the uniqueness of birthing practices in North Korea, mothers must adhere to a strict and unconventional set of rules during childbirth. They are prohibited from giving birth in the presence of anyone else, leaving them with no option but to endure labor alone. What's more, mothers are not permitted to reunite with their families or even their husbands for an entire week following childbirth. In the event of triplets, an even more unusual policy comes into play. These infants are entrusted to the state's care. This practice stems from mounting concerns over North Korea's declining birth rate. However, on a more positive note, these children are eventually returned to their parents when they reach the age of four. The diminishing fertility rate in North Korea has raised alarm within the government, prompting calls for women to have more children in order to secure the future of the nation. This combination of distinctive birthing laws and the government's demographic concerns paints a captivating portrait of North Korea's approach to childbirth and family life. Number 14. Atheism and Religious Suppression North Korea as a communist nation officially operates as an atheist state, with religion being heavily restricted and tightly controlled by the government. The country's ruling ideology places paramount importance on self-reliance and unwavering devotion to the state, considering it the ultimate authority. This fervent allegiance to the state naturally leads to the suppression of religious practices and the widespread prevalence of atheism among the populace. The government has enacted stringent regulations to curtail religious activities, ensuring that public worship is strictly prohibited. Religious organizations are required to function under the watchful eye of government supervision. Even the few places of worship that do exist are subjected to intense monitoring and strict control by state authorities. In its quest to maintain ideological purity and secure its grip on power, the North Korean government often seeks to eradicate religious beliefs, viewing them as potential threats to its authority and principles. While North Korea officially claims to allow freedom of religion, in practice, it systematically suppresses any form of religious expression that it deems subversive or in conflict with its overarching ideology. Historically, North Korea has had a presence of religions such as Christianity, Buddhism, and Shamanism. However, the practice of these religions has been significantly curtailed, with adherents facing severe restrictions and hardships. This complex interplay between atheism, state control, and religious suppression sheds light on the unique religious landscape within North Korea, where faith is a tightly regulated and monitored aspect of life. Number 13. North Korea's Unconventional Elections In North Korea's unique form of elections, democracy takes on an unconventional twist. Here's how it works. First, it's vital to understand that there's no genuine freedom to choose. Rejecting Kim Jong-un is unimaginable, as North Korean elections primarily serve as a census and an endorsement of the ruling regime. Citizens must cast their votes for a range of candidates competing for various positions, from the Supreme People's Assembly to local councils. However, what sets these elections apart is that each position has only one name on the ballot. Thus, every citizen must participate with severe penalties for non-compliance. Adding to the intrigue, citizens must register one month in advance for this compulsory exercise. The government closely examines the voter list for accuracy and uses it to identify potential defectors. Some defectors return to register hoping to protect their families in China. While recent elections include boxes for no votes, this seemingly democratic feature is a trap. Voting against the official candidate or abstaining is considered treason, leading to dire consequences like losing homes, jobs, and constant surveillance. In reality, North Korea's elections differ significantly from familiar democratic processes. Number 12. Unique System of Social Classification North Korea employs a unique social classification system called Songbun, significantly impacting citizens' lives. It's based on ancestors' backgrounds and relatives' behavior, sorting people into three primary castes. 
core, wavering, and hostile, with about 50 sub-classifications. Song Bun has a profound influence on trust, responsibilities, education, employment, and party membership. Its origins date back to a 1956 resolution and the Korean Workers' Party's Intensive Guidance Project, dividing the population into friendly, neutral, and enemy groups based on family background. Descendants of resistance fighters enjoy higher status, while those with connections to landlords, lawyers, or Christian ministers face lower status. Factory workers, laborers, and peasants rank relatively higher. Approximately 30% are in the preferred class, 40% in the middle, and 30% in the lowest category. Starting at age 17, officials maintain detailed records providing insight into North Korea's stratified social structure. Number 11. North Korea's Controlled Information Landscape In North Korea, strict government control and surveillance extend to citizens' access to information. Computer ownership requires special permission, with each computer registered as if it were a dangerous weapon. While the Internet isn't entirely banned, most North Koreans lack access to it. The country's intranet, known as Kwang Myong or Bright Star, relies on outdated technology and is primarily used for government purposes. Access to the global internet is limited to a select few, with less than 30 websites available to users, mainly consisting of propaganda, government content, and North Korean films. Social media platforms like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and South Korean content are blocked. While academic institutions offer some global internet access, it is closely monitored. North Korea has considered upgrading its network to 4G, reflecting its aim to modernize while maintaining tight control over information flow. Number 10. Ban on Fertilizer Importation North Korea has grappled with a severe shortage of fertilizer, exacerbated by the onset of the pandemic. In 2022, the country declared securing manure as its foremost challenge for the year. This scarcity can be attributed to several factors, including the regime's prioritization of military and nuclear spending over agriculture and its lack of access to chemical fertilizers due to sanctions. Local farmers found themselves in dire need of assistance, leading to a surge in demand for night soil, which essentially means using human feces as fertilizer. This unconventional practice began to emerge around 2010 when shops selling human excrement appeared. Initially, farmers resorted to using waste from their own families, but as human feces became a valuable commodity, it made sense to openly sell it. By 2014, Kim Jong-un officially instructed his people to use human and livestock manure on crops, as it became the most viable option for farmers. Vegetables cultivated with this unconventional fertilizer gained a reputation for their exceptional taste. In cases where a family couldn't produce sufficient waste or afford to buy any, they might resort to collecting it from other households. However, it's crucial to note that human excrement is far from sanitary, and it has been linked to health issues, including intestinal worm infestations among North Korean defectors. Despite state-run media encouraging the use of this self-made manure, the situation remained dire. In June 2022, Kim Jong-un officially declared a tense food crisis in the country, highlighting the severity of the agricultural challenges faced by North Korea. Number 9. K-pop can get you killed. In the past decade, North Korea has waged an open cultural battle cautioning its citizens to steer clear of all things South Korean, including fashion, hairstyles, music, and even slang. Meanwhile, South Korea has emerged as a potent cultural force, captivating global audiences with its makeup, skincare, K-pop, and K-drama. However, North Korea remains resolute in its efforts to block South Korean influence from crossing its borders. Over the years, North Korea has publicly executed at least seven individuals for watching or distributing South Korean K-pop videos. The country's leader, Kim Jong-un, has vehemently denounced K-pop as a vicious cancer and makes no effort to conceal his disdain for the neighboring and long-standing adversary's cultural exports. Since assuming power, Kim Jong-un has launched a relentless campaign against all forms of South Korean entertainment, believing it corrupts the minds of North Korean citizens. In 2020, a law was enacted that prescribes the death penalty for those caught distributing South Korean entertainment. Kim's initiative also led to the public execution of individuals found guilty of watching or circulating banned content.
Number 8. Ban on Foreign Media In contemporary times, North Korea's intensified crackdown on Western media is an open secret. Authorities have escalated their measures, even resorting to threatening parents with severe consequences if their children are found indulging in Western-made films and television programs. The recently implemented regulations dictate that parents of children caught watching foreign films could face up to six months of hard labor, while the children themselves may be sentenced to five years of imprisonment. Not too long ago, parents could escape with a stern warning if their children were found in possession of foreign media. However, the government has now adopted an uncompromising stance, considering exposure to Western culture an irredeemable transgression. North Korea is also exerting immense pressure on parents to ensure their children receive a proper education in socialist ideals. According to an anonymous source within North Korea who spoke with Radio Free Asia, Parents attending the mandatory weekly Inman Bond neighborhood watch meetings are subjected to stern warnings. Anyone found emulating behaviors associated with South Koreans faces a potential six-month imprisonment, and their parents may also be slapped with a corresponding six-month term. Furthermore, individuals caught smuggling Western media across the border risk facing the most severe consequence of all, the death penalty. Number 7. Currency and Foreign Exchange Regulation North Korea's official currency goes by the name of the North Korean One, and it serves as a captivating reflection of the country's distinctive economic system. What sets it apart, however, is that its exchange rate is not influenced by any market forces. Rather, it is firmly controlled and set by the government. Foreign visitors to North Korea find themselves navigating a unique financial landscape, Instead of using the North Korean won, they are required to transact using a distinct currency known as the Foreign Exchange Certificate. This specialized currency is primarily intended for use by tourists and can only be exchanged within the borders of the country. This financial arrangement underscores the isolated nature of North Korea's economy and the government's tight control over its financial interactions with the outside world. Number 6. Loyalty and Consequences Act for insults to the dictator Kim and his family. In North Korea, any form of disrespect or insult directed towards Kim Jong-un, the country's supreme leader, is considered not only an offense against the state, but a sacrilegious act against God. The consequences for those who defy this unwavering reverence are severe. Citizens are expected to pledge unwavering allegiance to Kim, his family, and the government, regardless of the regime's oppressive nature and they must live under its rule without question. Acts of defiance against the government are classified as blasphemy and are met with brutal consequences, applying equally to both visitors and citizens. In most instances, offenders find themselves imprisoned for extended periods, lasting from months to years, depending on the gravity of their transgression. In more extreme cases, the punishment may extend to the ultimate penalty death, one well-documented incident from years past involved Otto Warmbier, an American student apprehended at Pyongyang International Airport. Otto had attempted to leave the country after removing a billboard from his hotel room in North Korea. He was subsequently imprisoned, and although he was eventually released, his tragic demise shortly after his release was attributed to the harsh conditions he endured during his time in captivity. Now it's time for today's subscriber's pick. Hey there, curious minds. Take a moment to analyze this image. We're talking about North Korean female soldiers. Yes, you read that correctly. In a land known for its secrecy and isolation, someone managed to capture this remarkable image. Kudos to the daring photographer. But let's not get distracted by the photographer's bravery. What really piques our interest is what these formidable ladies are holding. It appears to be none other than a military gas mask. Now, one might assume they're in the midst of some hardcore training, but hey, who are we to jump to conclusions? Don't keep us hanging. Share your wild guesses and insights in the comments below. Number 5. Jeans are banned. In a seemingly unusual but very real prohibition, the wearing of jeans, particularly blue and skinny jeans, is strictly forbidden in the Democratic Republic of Korea. This ban is rooted in Kim Jong-un's perception of blue jeans as a symbol of American influence and capitalism, and as a result, 
he has enforced a law that bars citizens from donning this particular garment. The North Korean government has openly labeled blue jeans as representative of American imperialism. However, the restrictions on clothing extend beyond jeans. Various Western clothing items such as t-shirts, skirts, and suits have also been placed under the ban. Instead, citizens are required to wear traditional Korean clothing, such as the hanbok. The North Korean leadership has expressed its disapproval of numerous Western fashion trends, including hairstyles like mullets, ripped denim attire, spiky and dyed hair, branded t-shirts, and certain types of piercings. Since 2022, North Korea has intensified its crackdown on capitalist fashion. Youth League patrols have been deployed to target individuals with distinctive appearances, including those with long hair extending to their waists, individuals who dye their hair brown, people wearing clothing with prominent foreign letters, and women wearing tight-fitting pants. When apprehended, these individuals are required to wait on the roadside until the patrols complete their sweep. Subsequently, authorities escort them to the Youth League office, where they must submit written confessions of their fashion crimes. Offenders are only released once someone provides them with acceptable clothing to wear, underscoring the strict enforcement of North Korea's unique dress code. Number 4. The Kim Il-sung's Legacy Calendar While it's widely known that the Kim family enjoys immense reverence in North Korea, it's Kim Il-sung's the founder of the nation, who holds a truly special place in the hearts of its citizens. Despite his passing, he maintains an almost divine status and officially retains the title of the eternal president of the country to this day. North Korea's distinctiveness extends to its calendar, which revolves around the birth date of Kim Second Sung, born on 15th of April, 1912. This unique calendar system is known as the Juke calendar. Interestingly, North Koreans use this calendar alongside the Western one. For instance, they might say, we are now in Juche 108, corresponding to the year 2019 in the Western calendar. A North Korean defector shared that she found using the Yuche calendar more elegant and that she and her friends were extensively educated on it during their school years. Even after defecting to South Korea, she found it challenging to cease mentioning Juche alongside the Western year. The term Yuche translates to self-reliance and was introduced in 1997, commemorating the third anniversary of the eternal president Kim Il-sung's passing. Every North Korean publication includes both calendar years, and it's expected that all citizens use them in their daily lives. The government has taken steps to facilitate remembering this unique calendar, ensuring that it remains a cornerstone of North Korean society. Number 3. Forced Labor Forced labor stands as an integral component of North Korea's existence, with the nation's foundation deeply rooted in political repression. North Koreans find themselves bereft of the choice to select their preferred occupations or the freedom to switch jobs at their discretion. Instead, the government dictates both the type of work each citizen must undertake and their corresponding wages. Between April and September of 2009, the government initiated the 150-day battle campaigns aimed at bolstering the economy. During this period, citizens are compelled to toil for extended hours and meet rigorous production quotas. Their labor contributes to the implementation of various government initiatives, including the construction of infrastructure like roads and buildings. Yet, this labor mobilization is only the tip of the iceberg when contrasted with the conditions endured by those detained in camps across the country. Within these camps, prisoners, including children, are subjected to arduous forced labor tasks, such as farming and mining, often under harsh and unforgiving conditions. These individuals are expected to endure severe hardships, including malnutrition, torture, unsanitary living conditions, and a lack of adequate medical care. Regrettably, their plight often goes unnoticed, even by the highly revered supreme leader. Number 2. Emigration, Control and Consequences Departing from North Korea represents an extraordinarily challenging and perilous endeavor due to the strict regime controls that effectively isolate its citizens from the outside world. The government has established an extensive surveillance system with informants embedded at all levels of society, making any escape attempt highly risky. North Koreans who aspire to leave the country must navigate a complex labyrinth of obstacles. Firstly, acquiring a passport is a formidable task. 
requiring approval from authorities who meticulously scrutinize applicants' backgrounds. Even if one manages to obtain a passport, securing exit visas, which are imperative for leaving the country, is exceptionally difficult. The government often denies these visas, citing reasons like the preservation of ideological purity or loyalty to the regime. Physical barriers further compound the challenges. North Korea's borders are heavily fortified, patrolled by security forces with strict orders to prevent unauthorized crossings. Even crossing into neighboring China, a common escape route, carries its own set of risks. North Korean defectors face constant threats of arrest and repatriation by Chinese authorities. The consequences of attempting to leave North Korea can be severe, not only for the individuals, but also for their families left behind. The regime punishes defectors and their relatives through imprisonment, forced labor, and in some cases even execution, creating a formidable deterrent to escape. Number 1. Forced Abortion In North Korea, citizens are tightly restricted from leaving the country, and any attempt to escape is seen as an act of defiance against the regime and a betrayal of the nation's ties with the West. Pregnant women who try to escape often face forced abortions. Many of these women, once arrested and detained, tragically lose their unborn children due to the harsh treatment inflicted by prison guards. They endure beatings and laborious tasks like carrying heavy bricks on their backs for extended periods. This grueling routine continues until they give birth. If the baby survives, they are instructed to leave it outside, where it often succumbs to freezing weather conditions. Some women take dangerous journeys in a bid to flee the country, often aiming for South Korea to escape the threats of sexual exploitation and human trafficking. However, even if they successfully cross the border, they face severe punishment upon their return to North Korea. As we conclude our journey through the intriguing legal realm of North Korea, it becomes evident that these laws offer a unique window into a society shaped by its distinctive isolation. If you have opinions or thoughts about these crazy laws, feel free to share them in the comments section below. Until next time, thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey.